So welcome, good evening everybody, hope you've had a lovely week and if you're watching this on uh, Catch Up to my YouTube channel, I hope you're all great. Now sometimes I do my Facebook lives on a topic that I think is of interest to you and other times something catches my eye that I think you'd be particularly interested in and I like to throw, I like to read these articles and then put my own spin on what I think it's telling us, what I think is good or bad about the information. Um, and this week, I was quite super excited to see a report uh, published by the World Wildlife Fund in conjunction with NOR, bit odd, but anyway, it doesn't matter, in conjunction with NOR, uh, research that had been done on how best to protect the planet with plant foods that we choose, whilst at the same time ensuring that the foods that we're eating are the best for our health alongside it. So I think it's great to be considering how we can choose our food sources that are going to be really good for the planet, environmentally friendly, uh, low cost to produce, uh, low on resources like water, and I'm particularly keen to think that these are also going to be low on requiring um, chemicals like pesticides and herbicides and nitrites and things to make them grow so that they're hopefully more organic. So this report was published on the 9th of February, it only came to my attention a few days ago. As I said, it's in conjunction with NOR and it's 50 foods for healthier people and a healthier planet. Um, it's, I think it's strictly known if you're going to Google this as the Future 50 Foods Report. Future 50 Foods Report. And um, whilst I'm not vegan or vegetarian, I do eat some meat and I eat a lot of fish and I do eat vegetarian food. I'm very much aware that our diets need to be plant Based. That doesn't mean you need to exclude meat or fish or eggs if you eat those, but our diets need to be plant rich. And what I talk about a lot through my talks, um, in my um, through my newsletter with my clients, I talk a lot about trying to achieve 10 a day and not just 10 a day vegetables, but across the week, we should be aiming to eat 40 different plant foods every week because of their huge benefit with the nutrients that they contain. And I think there's a statement that was given by the research advisor, Peter Gregory, and he stated that diversified diets not only improve human health, but benefit the environment through diversified production systems that encourage wildlife and are more sustainable with the use of resources. So if you are interested to know the report, if you're on my newsletter list, and I really recommend that you do, so that way you get to see not just my live now, but you get directed back to my YouTube channel. Um, this has turned into a podcast podcast from my website and also the blog is on my website but it goes out in my newsletter um, the link will be there that takes you to the full report I don't believe in everything that's said in this report because I do not believe that eating meat is quite as bad as they're making out for the planet and I do not believe that we should be all eating insects don't take me down that route um, however, we should be eating probably less meat and more plant foods anyway. Um, so you will get the link to the report if you're on my newsletter uh, or if you pick this uh, blog up from my website, which is added within the week. Um, it should be Tuesday when I record this and by the Friday it will be on my website. Um, so the other thing I'm conscious of when I go through this list of food is some may be at higher cost and we don't need to take that into consideration. Of course, when we're eating anything, there are several factors that we're going to take into consideration. Of course, cost has to be taken into consideration, especially at the current time. But we need to be thinking not only about cost, but we need to be thinking about diversity of foods coming back to that 40 different plant foods every week, the diversity of foods, thinking about seasonality, thinking about buying local from your farmer's markets as well, um, as well as the cost. So all of those things are factors. Not all of these I'm going to go through are expensive, but some because they may not be your traditional foods, 
they may come at a slightly higher cost. But I will go through all these foods and I recommend that you try and incorporate some new foods every single week into your diet and start rotating the types of things that you're eating. I know we're all creatures of habit, but I'll just take you through um, in the eight groups that I've put these in. So the first one is to think about algae. Now the Japanese eat quite an algae rich diet and we know full well that the Japanese diet is significantly healthier than the typical Western diet today. Now I know it's not all about seaweed, but they do eat a lot of seaweed in their diet. Now rather than thinking about having to chuck loads of seaweed in your diet, you can get cul culinary shakes, a bit like salt and pepper. And there's a very good brand called Sea greens that have a culinary shake with seaweed in that you can sprinkle over your stews and your soups um, in place of salt and pepper. So that's a really easy way to introduce some um, seaweed into your diet, um, the algae. Um, you can buy sea salad vegetables now. I looked online as a Cornish company producing around the British Isles. You know, obviously you can get sea salad vegetables. You could add a handful of that into salads. Um, and of course, the popularity of sushi means it's becoming far more common now to buy seaweed wraps. Um, so if you love your sushi, then you could be getting seaweed that way. And seaweed is really antioxidant rich. What do antioxidants do? They help protect our cells from oxidative damage. And a lot of ill health and disease stems from uh, um, our, the fact that the body is too high in oxidative stress and damage because it doesn't have enough antioxidants within the diet. So that's one way to get more antioxidants in the diet. The second group here, much lower cost, most of these, good old beans and pulses. Of course, if you're vegan or vegetarian, you're already going to be eating a lot of beans and pulses because these foods provide your main protein source. If you're a meat eater, do think about having some meat-free meals by adding in beans and pulses, or indeed cutting down on the amount of meat in the dish and replacing some of the meat content by adding in some beans and pulses there. They are a fantastic source of fiber that we are significantly short of, shockingly short of fiber in the Western diets today. So another way to get more fiber in your diet alongside um, vegetables. Um, and as I said, they are protein rich as well. So some unusual types to look out for that are considered to be very planet or more planet friendly are things like mung beans, black eyed beans, adzuki beans and fava beans. Um, and lentils are also good. You know, good old red lentils are considered to be very environmentally friendly too. Number three in my list is cereals and grains. Now, why I do, why, while I don't promote a very high cereal diet, we can have some and grains, we can have some in the diet. The reason why I don't promote a diet that's high in grains is because they're quite starchy, particularly if you go for the refined ones, which we should be eating the whole grain versions anyway. So Grains are quite starchy. I don't encourage a high grain diet, but we can eat some grains alongside our meals with our protein and our vegetables. And I do promote more of a gluten free approach to our grains. Um, and so I often recommend to my clients grains that are um, gluten free. The reason being is that we tend to have a lot of wheat in our diet and other grains that are very gluten rich. It can be very hard to digest, very challenging on the digestive tract um, and some links to autoimmune conditions. So as much as possible, choosing gluten free grains is really good. So these grains also have a higher protein content than some of the more traditional grains that we often eat. And because I often find that diets are quite low in protein, then finding grains in small quantities that you can add alongside the other foods you're eating helps to just up your protein intake a little bit more. Um, they often are quite high in minerals like zinc and manganese. These are trace minerals um, that we need in minute amounts, but still absolutely essential for our health in terms of what they do for us. So some of the grains you might want to look out for are, and they're gluten-free, are buckwheats, quinoa, uh, wild rice, millet, amaranth, and there's one another one called fonio. It's an African grain, 
I know we do need to think about the cost and the impact of flying some of these grains to the UK. It's all a bit of give and take, isn't it? But do look out for some of these different types of grains. Number four on my list are fruit vegetables. These are vegetables that are actually, well, sorry, these are actually classified in the vegetable world kingdom as a fruit, but they are, um, we eat them as vegetables because they're not sweet. So we, in, we include them in the diet as vegetables, but strictly speaking, they are fruit. They're considered to be more plant friendly. Things like courgettes, peppers, squash, and okra. The Indian diet is rich in okra and apparently doesn't need a lot of water to produce it, hence why they eat a lot of it. Um, so these are very good fruit type vegetables to eat. You can think about making a rat lovely ratatouille with these types of vegetables. It did also include yellow tomatoes, not the red variety, as being a lower cost to produce. But if you look for them in the supermarket, I think you'll probably find they cost a lot more to buy. So there's the, there's the, the trade off with the cost element. Um, so you can make a ratatouille, you can roast these vegetables or add them in any stews casseroles and soups as well. They're good for vitamins and minerals generally, and of course, phytonutrients. And what I mean by phytonutrients, these are plant-based nutrients that provide a protective element to the plant and the plant passes on that benefit to human health as well. Number five on the leaf is, five on my list is good old leafy greens. Now we all eat or should be eating lots of dark green leafy vegetables full of antioxidants, they're full of vitamins, minerals and fiber. The, but the ones that are better for the planet um, is kale, uh, spinach and cabbages, but do include the red cabbages here, um, not just the green cabbages. Uh, think about using uh, leaves from beetroot. They're often called beets. So they're the leaves that come from the beetroots. Don't throw them away. They're just as good for you. Um, and dark green leafy vegetables, including things like red cabbage, is rich in vitamin C, uh, rich in minerals like uh, phosphorus, um, potassium, iron, mag magnesium and calcium so really good for bone health when we eat these vegetables number six on my list is mushrooms now mushrooms there's been a lot of research around different types of the less cost common mushrooms and these are included in the planet friendly uh, vegetable list now the research around these has stemmed a lot around the fact that uh, some of these uh, types of unusual mushrooms that we don't eat so much of are very good at protecting the brain, good for our immune system and have anti-tumor properties. So are considered to be very good to help protect the body against cancers. These are mushrooms like lion's mane, shiitake and mitake. There are lots of other mushroom types out there. So do go and look for those. Um, and add them to your meals wherever you can. These are definitely very low cost to produce. Number seven on my list is nuts and seeds. Now we know nuts and seeds are very good for us. The fats are really good for us. They're rich in fiber, they're rich in protein uh, and lots of other vitamins and minerals alongside that. Think about eating some of the ones that we may not tend to eat um, a lot. Things like linseeds, which are also known as flax seeds. Um, but I promote eating them ground. You can buy them milled because they're so tiny that if you eat them whole, they're likely to pass straight through you. A great source of fiber, but you're not gonna get that, the nutritional benefit from them. Um, other good seeds to eat alongside the vast range of nuts and seeds. Don't forget things like hemp seed um, and sesame seeds. The, all these seeds are very rich in omega-3 alongside omega-6 as well. And finally, I want to mention root vegetables. Now, a bit like the cereal grain category, although maybe not quite to that degree, I don't promote a diet really high in these. I definitely promote eating them because the more vegetables, the bigger the variety we eat, the better. However, do bear in mind that most root vegetables are very starchy. What I mean by that is they have a lot of sugar. The sugar is broken down very quickly in the gut and it can send our blood sugar levels 
high quite rapidly um because so it can un make our blood sugar levels quite unstable so it's not that you shouldn't eat them just be a little bit careful incorporate them alongside your proteins and fats and other vegetables like your courgettes and peppers and your dark green leafy vegetables but don't have just a massive plate load of these for for those reasons but these vegetables are lower cost to produce um sorry i shouldn't say lower cost well they are lower cost to produce these but they are also uh, more resistant and therefore um, better for the environment in terms of producing them. Um, these are parsnips and turnips and swede are the main ones to fall into this category. And don't forget to eat the leaves. We tend to chop off the leaves and throw them away and just eat the, the tuber, the root. Whereas what we should do is eat the leaves. Very good for us. Eat them like you would eat any other leafy vegetable. Um, so those are the eight sort of classified classifications I've talked about there, but do go and look at the full report for the 50 foods that is in, are included in that report. Think about trying to include different ones into your diet and always, always remember what you're aiming for are 10 different vegetables or plant foods every single day and across the entire week trying to eat 40 different plant foods um in a week so there's your challenge go and have a look at the report i think it's really interesting i think it's really interesting to take a look at how we can eat healthily but alongside protecting the planet as well so thank you for watching do check out all my videos on my youtube channel over 150 now and i look forward to seeing you next week in my facebook group if you're watching it on youtube it's in called inspired lifestyle choices um, so do check out my Facebook group. Come and join if you're not a member. If you're watching it in my Facebook group, I look forward to seeing you next Tuesday at six o'clock. Thank you for watching. Have a great week, everyone. Bye.